Hello and welcome to the Irish Aesthete. Previously, I was talking about the beautiful Elizabeth, Empress of Austria, who came to stay here on two consecutive years in the 19th century. On both occasions, while in Ireland, she stayed in the same house, Summer Hill in County Meath. This is a photograph of the entrance front, and it gives an idea of the impressive scale of the building, an immense Baroque palace with a central block on either side of which substantial quadrants terminating in great towers led to equally impressive wings. The garden front was somewhat less muscular in manner, but still gave an impression of vastness. Summerhill was constructed for the Honourable Hercules Langford Rowley, whose great-grandfather, Sir Hercules Langford, had bought the land on which it stood from the Bishop of Meath. For a long time, the family lived in an extended 16th century tower house called Lynch's Castle, the ruins of which remain in the grounds to this day. In 1732, Hercules Langford Rowley married his cousin Elizabeth, daughter and heiress of Clotworthy Upton, and it's generally agreed that work on the house began around that date, presumably to commemorate the couple's union. Although impossible to prove absolutely, the most widespread supposition is that Summer Hill's architect was Sir Edward Lovett Pierce. There are echoes in its design of Vanborough, in whose office Pierce is thought to have trained, although Richard Castle may have had a hand here as well. In any case, writing of the building in 1752, the Anglican clergyman and future Bishop of Meath, Richard Pocock, specifically described Summer Hill as a commanding eminence. The house is like a grand palace, but in the Vanborough style. Even the approaches were grand, such as this splendid triumphal arch, which, as the caption on this early 20th century photograph notes, was merely a side entrance gate. Happily, it survives, having been moved to another location, and this is what the same arch looks like today. Fortunately, we have some idea of what the interiors of Summer Hill look like, thanks to a series of photographs taken for Volume 5 of the original Irish Georgian Society records, published in 1913. Here is the immense double-height entrance hall with its chimney piece that looks to have incorporated the family coat of arms. Some of the plaster work may have been completed a decade or two after the house was finished, as it shows the influence, if not the actual hands, of the Lafranchini brothers, as can clearly be seen in this image of a drawing room ceiling. And here's a dining room. Note that both spaces are designated as being the small, so one can only imagine what the large must have looked like. Unfortunately, the house was damaged by fire at the start of the 19th century, and thereafter successive generations of owners never had enough money to oversee a complete refurbishment. In fact, the house and estate was offered for sale, unsuccessfully, in 1851. However, some work was done on the house, including a new main staircase, in the early 1870s, not long before the house was taken by the Empress Elizabeth. Note on the wall here the inevitable reproduction of the Sistine Madonna. But even in a somewhat reduced state, Summer Hill was evidently good enough for its imperial guest, who on each occasion spent some six weeks living in the building. It's worth noting that the Rowley family, who in due course became Lords Langford, also had a large residence in Dublin. This was Langford House. In 1912, the Irish Georgian Society records proposed that it was the oldest surviving house in the city. Far less obviously spectacular than Summer Hill, the building's plain exterior gave no hint of what lay inside, because this was one of the few houses in Ireland containing original Robert Adam decoration. In the mid-1760s, Hercules Langford Rowley had asked Adam to come up with interior schemes for both Summer Hill and Langford House, and while the former were never executed, the latter were, as can be seen in this plan for one of the first floor drawing rooms. Alas, Langford House is no more, having been demolished in 1931. The site, for those of you interested, 
is now occupied by a Marks and Spencer's store. And in the next episode, I'll tell you about the fate of Summer Hill in County Meath. I look forward to seeing you then. Thank you so much for watching The Irish Ace Fit. Goodbye. Thank you.